much serving. Martha was busy trying to take care of Jesus and the guests. In her busyness, she was distracted. That is, she couldn't pay attention to the extraordinary event that was happening in her house. In her busyness, she started treating Jesus like an ordinary human being who had come to their house. And because of that, she succumbed to her fears. Dear friends, there are times that we will become too busy with the work of God that we forget the God who gave us the work to do. When we are busy too much that we don't even have time to pause, to reflect, to meditate, to see what is really happening, to allow God to do His work, what happens? We become depressed. We succumb to our fears. Mary chose the good portion. And you ask, what is this good portion? It is faith in God's providence. This is the kind of faith that makes one completely relaxed like little children who fall asleep in the hands of their mothers. This faith cancels our fears and brings us inner peace. This faith assures us that our success does not depend on our personal hard work, but on the grace of God. The good portion is having a firm trust in God's power to make up for our inadequacies. The good portion is refusing to panic knowing that Jesus Christ himself is the guest in your home, in your family, in your situation. Refusing to panic knowing that Jesus Christ is here. Our first reading today reveals another classic example of why we Christians should not live our life in fear and worry. St. Paul, writing to the Galatians, is confessing that he was once a great, he was once the greatest persecutor of the Christian faith, to the extent that he was determined to destroy the church, even at his infant stage. For God arrested him and to make a mockery of him for his lofty ambition, trying to destroy God's church, God made him to become Christianity's greatest promoter. My dear friends in Christ, what does this lesson, what does this teach us? The arrest of Paul, what does it teach us? I often hear Christians express fears about the church, about the future of the church. I hear people say things like, if we don't fight, Islam will take over Christianity. I hear people draw analogy between the church in Nigeria, for instance, and the church in Turkey thousands of years ago. The question I ask is, can we really fight for God? Is it the case that God is not powerful enough to fight for his church? If God did not allow Paul to destroy the church when the church was less than a hundred years old, when the church was just beginning, is it now that God will fold his hands and allow this church to die? 
child of God, worry no more. Worry no more. Because he said, is more than capable and responsible. He knows how to protect his own. He knows what is needed. He knows how to provide that which is needed. It is not for us to pick up swords, cutlass, and cloth, and say we want to go and fight for God. Only a weak God is defended by human powers. When people say, oh, oh, I'm fighting for God, that God that they are fighting for is weak. It's not real. It's not real. How many Christians fought against Saul when he was persecuting the church? How many? God can fight his battle with my dear friends in Christ. God knows exactly how to provide what is needed, when it is needed, regardless of your panicking and worrying. God knows how to protect that which He loves. Jesus wasn't joking when He said that the gates of hell cannot prevail against His church. Do you know that St. Paul is not the only one who tried to destroy this church? Do you know that many, many persons have had such ambition to destroy the church, even from within the church? Where are they today? Gone. Forgotten. Passed on. Perished along with their evil dreams and plans. Dear friends, only one thing is needed faith. Mary has chosen the good portion to sit at Jesus' feet in prayer and adoration, to listen carefully to Jesus' words by meditating on the Bible. To trust deeply that in the midst of the chaos, Jesus is more than able to provide. I tell you one thing. Do you know or do you believe or do you agree with me that 30 minutes you spend with the Bible on a daily basis? is far more effective than 10 hours you spend trying to put food on your table. Mary has chosen the better portion. May God help us to choose the better portion. May God help us to realize that being with Jesus, spending time with Jesus, is better than being busy. We make this prayer in Christ our Lord. Amen.